In 1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of three to two. Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Tech and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. Masada's throw. Roberts safe. And what can I say? Just dip my hat and, and call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports, episode 85. Brian Shackman here with John Senecal, of course, recapping a little David Ortiz Hall of Fame. Uh, state of the two teams going into the trading deadline, which we will talk about a lot over the next week. Uh, John, what's happening? Not much, Brian. I'm I am here, and you are there. Um, uh, yes, we remotely, are. but you know it is what it is. I have a lot of baseball in my family, and uh, I'm glad the All Star break is over and baseball's back. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Baseball, baseball, baseball. Yeah, the Yankees start the second half, of course, you know, with a firm double digit lead in the American League East, and the Red Sox are games now out of the wild card. But I do want to start with David Ortiz in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I guess. You know, we talked on, on my, my radio show on WTIC uh, News Talk 1080 with Josh Rawich from the Baseball Hall of Fame. And he's, you know, because I asked him, I was like, well, compare the Ortiz induction to Jeter because I wanted him to say, well, the Ortiz one was way better. But he pointed out that, you know, the Jeter one was in the fall during the week. They didn't have different all, times. They didn't have all the attendant events right. still. So it was sort of apples and oranges. But I can tell you the energy definitely seemed to be, I think it's because of the the Dominican part of it. Yep. But it definitely seemed to be a bigger deal with Ortiz. And it's not necessarily an indictment of Jeter. No. No. De- definitely different. Um, I would say that was the, one of the things I enjoyed about the Ortiz um, induction speech was you know, he was almost better to listen to when he was speaking Spanish. Yes. And I had no idea what he was saying. And it was great right. because, you know, he had that following there and he speaks more eloquently like that. But he he did a good job. He did a good job. I, I did like uh, a couple things I did that stood out to me was uh, the one time he talked about um, in the Twins organization how the coach, he, he either like grounded a ball or bunted a ball to move runners over. And he came back in the dugout and the coach said, you know, you're not here to move runners. You're here to drive them in. And then he was like, right there, he said it clicked, and that was it. He's like, there was no more, you know, everything was about destroying the baseball and knocking it and driving in runs. And then the other one was Dustin Pedroia, uh, when he was pulling the ball too much, he, he got in his face and grabbed him by the neck and said, I'm going to whoop your butt if you don't if you keep pulling the ball. And, and uh, those are the two things that stood out for me with the, with the speech. I thought that was pretty funny. But also, you know, things you don't ever hear about, um, you know, as, as, a, as a fan grow, uh, following the game. You don't hear about that stuff until these, you know— speeches. I've never heard that before. Heck, I didn't even know Ortiz. I forgot he was on the Mariners at one time. Yeah, I think that's sort of where he started, right? Yeah. And I, I thought that what he said, I can't remember all the details of what he said about Jack McCormick, the traveling secretary, but like little things like that. I mean, I get the impression that Ortiz, even when he wasn't a superstar, um, you know, dealt with everybody from big role to small role with, with respect. And I think that uh, that's a big deal. And listen, I don't know about the PEDs or any of that stuff. What I can just tell you is that PEDs don't make you hit the ball well when it's most important. Now, would some of those have gone out of the park? I don't know. Do, do I know that he had stuff? I have no idea. But the bottom line is is that he was the author of some of those magical moments in sports history. And I don't think it's being hyperbolic to say that. And to have the clutch hits that he had at the times that he had, even if he didn't, I don't know, maybe – he wouldn't have been a Hall of Famer if he didn't get to 500 home runs or or win a couple of rings. But you know, for for a guy like that to to win, I think three rings and to hit 500 home runs is pretty unique in baseball history. He might even be the only like for a lefty, I think the only non-Yankee to to get that kind of stat. I don't get caught up in the Hall of Fame stuff. I think that what's interesting to me is that a lot of times guys who were just cocky baseball players, they get all humbled when they get the plaque. I think it's a bunch of garbage sometimes. And I don't get, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be like staring, you know, from 100 yards out to listen to the speech or whatever. But I do think that Ortiz for Red Sox fans, especially if you're under the age of, of 60, really represents, you know, a, a turning point in the history of the organization. And so he's 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 going to be royalty for, forever, even if he didn't make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, there's there's a lot to wrap around with David Ortiz in the city of Boston for sure, right up to the marathon bombings and how you know the team and the city and he reacted to that. Um, just it, 
he he defined that team. He really did. And there's you know when you can when you especially nowadays when you can notch that onto your hat too, like a Jeter or a Ripken or you know like even you know Vlad Senior. He he you know he could have went either way with the Expos or the uh, I didn't or the even Angels. know Vlad. Se- I didn't know Vlad Senior was in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and he is, and he, I think he's under an uh, Angels hat, I believe. Um, I, I could be wrong. It could be Expos, but, but but point being made, I can't even remember. You know what I mean? Right. Like I know Poppy's in there. You know for. The Red Sox, you know, there's yeah. no doubt. It's like a Jeter. So, you know, that speaks volumes. And listen, the, the, the thing about the PEDs, I think if there was enough enough smoke, there'd be enough fire and he wouldn't be in there. Now, granted, he's a great brand manager. He's not as good as A-Rod, yeah. but he's a great brand manager. Yeah. So uh, we'll give him that. But listen, great career, clutch player. So I, I, I have no problem with him being there. So this leads to John Senecal, Brian Shackman here, episode 85 of Fan Base, a deep dive in the greatest rivalry in sports, which leads me to the, the state of the the two teams in the second half, because, you know, with obviously the Red Sox, 03, 04, you know, they lose in the ALCS in 03, they win the World Series in 04, and, and, and really right around that time, the place was sold out every night. You couldn't get a ticket. I used to sell a couple games a year, and it would pay for my whole season. I made money off reselling tickets. To now, where the place is almost never sold out, and the value proposition honestly is not there for the fans. It just it, it, it honestly is not there. And I went to the game uh, last Sunday. I'm going to give you the date, depending on when you're listening to this. It was after the clunker, right? The yeah, game after the clunker. Two days, at, two days after the clunker. Yeah, and so it was Sunday the 24th against the Blue Jays. They got swept by the Blue Jays. And and the thing is, is that, okay, Trevor Story wasn't in the lineup. J.D. Martinez wasn't in the lineup. Rafael Devers wasn't in the lineup. So they had three other top five hitters, basically. Now, just one due to injury, though, right? The other guys are getting a grass, but... Yeah, I don't I even know. Ha- I don't even... Yeah, that doesn't make much sense, because if those other guys should are playable, they should be playing if they're not injured. It's like they're not even playing to win. And the funny thing is, as, as terrible as that, that 28 to whatever loss was, in some ways, this was more embarrassing. And I, there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk about, but I, I p- people... Things that... They made, like, at least three errors in the game that were on the official scorecard, but I will just tell you, like, I want to take you through it, and it was really one of the most uncomfortable things to watch at a Red Sox game ever. And, that, and this is like, and I've seen some inept teams. You know, they've had some last place teams in the last ten years. I know it. Jeter Downs playing third, Franchi Cordero's on left. Neither one of them naturally play that position. And I, I, at some point, I have to put it on the manager. But two things that didn't show up in the score sheet. You know, the the first ground ball of the game. Right, it's a ground ball. You know the rules of baseball, John. The third baseman is supposed to be super aggressive. If he can cut anything off, the shortstop never gets mad. You just—it's it, a shorter path to first base. Yeah, period. Exactly. He, he defers to 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 Bogarts. Doesn't cut it off. Takes two extra hops. He has to try to barehand it to throw him out. Can't do it. Right. So that doesn't show up as an error. The home score gave an in, an infield hit, but Down should have cut it off, and he probably would have got him. You know, maybe at least a 50-50 chance. Right. The next thing is, Jeter Downs playing third base. The ball bounces off the bag. I don't think he knows it's a fair ball. Now, another he pulled thing. pulled a knob lock and just watched it? Yes. And so, like, beyond the fact that you know that third basemen, whenever they can cut the ball off, they're going to, that if the ball hits the bag, it's a fair ball. Right. And he's standing there almost not quite as bad as Jeter Downs on that inside the park grand slam on Friday night. But and it, So not until the ump said fair did he move. You mean Jared Duran. Jared Duran. Yeah, Jared Duran, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on Friday night. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and so, like, those are two things that did not show up as errors. What, they were awful baseball plays. And then there's a single to left, and Franchi Cordero overruns it. It goes underneath his glove, which is, again, 11-year-old Little League. Right. And then when he throws it in, he throws it almost directly into the ground. It four-hopped to second base. Worse than Manny cutting the ball off? Yes, I mean I'm close, <laughs> close, maybe not entirely, but like those are like these are major league players, and the reason why I say Core at some point has to be responsible. If you're going to put somebody in left field who's not comfortable there, if you're going to put somebody at third base who's not comfortable there, you better drill the crap out of them, right. and they better know what they're doing because it was so embarrassing. The the you know people are paying a hundred hundred dollars plus for a ticket 
to see that garbage was right. super uncomfortable. I mean, I have to tell you, like, it was really bad. And and this shouldn't be an injury thing because, as far as I know, Devers is the only one that was injured at the time. Yeah, you're I talking think Story about might be hurt, but I mean, JD was getting a day off, and that's the other thing is that you know, and again, I'm not trying to make this a Red Sox podcast, but it doesn't appear like the Red Sox are looking to try to win so they can be buyers at the deadline and go for it. It looks like the opposite. It looks like they're telling Cora, hey, don't go out of your way to try to win ball games. If we're out of it enough, we won't acquire much. People won't say much, and then we can keep the program on, on you know, on schedule. But do they? But do they just do they deal Bogarts and then and then put Story right over short and put D, uh, D, blech, Jeter Downs at second where he probably should be. You know, I mean that's it, the logical choice right now sure. if they're not. But I, I would. We talked about this last time. I have another, don't understand if they're gonna they're gonna play like this. Are they gonna just hold Pat and the fans? Like, ah, everything's great. You know, like they know the Bogarts is gonna is is gonna opt out of his deal and he's gonna leave. Right. So most likely, I, I would mean, say Devers. Devers. I mean, Bo- Bogarts. I think would stay with the right. I mean, I know Boris is there, but with the right deal, I think Bogarts would stay. But Bogarts but, can have has an opt out at the end of this year. I mean, both yeah, of them he, do. Yes. Well, no, I think it's another year for Devers. But your point is well well taken. And, well, my thing is, I said to my wife, you know, we've had season tickets from one form or another since, I think, 05. And I said to her, I said, we can get tickets off StubHub anytime we want, right? And you can save save money. You can get good seats for less than what we pay for them. I mean, they were selling waters. Thank goodness they let me bring in, like, a, 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 they didn't give me crap for having a water bottle. They sell waters for, it's not even spring water it's you know filter water for 475 a bottle yeah and you still have to wait a half an hour in line my kettle corn was burnt i mean it was really a bad experience and the truth is i'm like why should i keep my season tickets if i can go when i want right you know it doesn't make any sense and so in terms of the baseball side of things i I, if if bogarts is gone i really am questioning you know because after bets if Bogart, and by all accounts, Bo- Betts was gonna didn't want to stay, but by all accounts, Bogart wanted to stay, right. and so I, I, I really, I'm not giving up on being a fan, but it really takes a huge amount of positive energy out of my soul for that for that team. Well, it's certainly gonna be interesting to see what happens and up coming up to the trade deadline, which is uh, now you know, it's not it's not far away. It's not far yeah. away, and the Yankees. I mean, obviously, the Yankees are rolling along and they're playing. Okay, listen, they're not great over the last ten games, five hundred. They sh- they should be playing better, but listen, they like I've always said, they've been playing way up on on top of the ceiling. They do have holes. Michael King is hurt out for the season yeah, now. That was sad. I feel bad. Feel bad for him. Yeah, well, it's tough. Oh. I mean, listen, I had said this before. Now now is the time when they're going to have to figure it out. Like they got big time bullpen holes right now. They have inexperienced pitching, Tyon um, and Nestor Cortez, who don't have a lot of innings on their back on their front end, which are gonna they're going to be required to throw a lot of innings if they're going to win the World Series. So they're yeah. going to have to figure that out. The bullpen. Pen. I mean, hey, listen, I think we might wind up seeing a, re- a reunion of David Robertson coming back. Probably, really? maybe he comes over in a package with Ian Happ um, from Chicago, and they get them. And you know, Ian Happ would be a great switch hitting addition to the team. And obviously, you know how I feel about Joey Gallo. But you know, the talk is Luis Castillo coming from uh, Cincinnati, but the, the return they want a lot, and they're talking about you know Volpe and the Martian. You know, I don't know. It, it's. The Yankees are going to have to do something because you are not going to go through Houston and beat them with the team you have on the field right, right. now. They've proven that. So something's going to have to be done. It's just a matter of Will Cashman and the organization either pony up the money and go over the threshold and get some more talent and go over the you know whatever the tax thing and kick them back in the draft 10, 10 rounds, or are they going to lose the prospects? That could happen both ways too, but you know they're going to have to part with somebody if they're going to want that high-grade talent. Well, listen, if you want to talk straight – there are three teams. There's the Yankees, the Astros, and the Dodgers. Those are the three best teams in baseball. And yep. right now, I would, I would, records aside, I put the Yankees third on that list. Yeah, I would. I would too. And, and so they, and again, I don't know the team as well as you do. It's but really it, only because of their pitching questions right correct. now. Correct. And you know, and then all people, you know, and, and Juan Soto's taking up all the oxygen nah, in the room. I think, that, I think that, I think they got to just step back from that one. You know, what I, mean? I, well, I, I think that if they took him, that means that Judge might be gone, and I think that would be a big mistake. It could just really just rile it up way too much. You know, it just yep. could be too much. Let's focus on what needs to be fixed, not what you know the genie in the bottle and all the big, you know. And I also think that they don't need Soto to win a World Series. They no. don't. And and also, I think that Washington will have a lot of trouble moving him. So I think that if they sit and wait, they'd actually get a better deal. 
Uh, so I, I think. I or think you, that, or you sign him when Giancarlo comes off the books. You know, sure. You know, exactly. you, 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 that's twenty twenty seven. So you only have two years of him, but you can get him as a free agent if he sticks around. He's going to go to free agency from someone if he doesn't get a long term deal. Yeah. So, I think it's a good point, and we talked about this in the last episode. To me, I, I think that getting a, a competent closer, not to put pressure on the current guy. But to at least have him there in case the guy melts down or they need have a setup great help. Eight, nine, they definitely need setup. Yeah, help. you need you need something. And so, but right now, I so I agree with you. And because I look at the I look at the Yankees and I, I they may be better on paper than the Astros, but they're not beating the Astros right now. No. And and the Dodgers just look when they the thing with the Dodgers is sort of what the Yankees do on most nights in the AL is that. When one guy struggles, another guy picks him up, and 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 they'll get bottom of the order production when Betts has an overnight and stuff like that. And I I think the Yankees have have the ability to to do that as well. But I I don't think the Yankees win the World Series as they're currently constructed. No, I hundred percent totally agree with you. And that's just not the Joey Gallo factor. That there's other holes and they need to be addressed. And I think you know, I would think if you're sitting up in that presidential suite and you're watching this team play every night and you know what's going on you need to figure it out and 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 back whatever decisions that your guys that you put in those spots to make make because is there a frontline the, starter for them to get is well, there Luis somebody? castillo would yeah. be the one and cincinnati you know and freddie montas and in, in oakland and they talk about him but hey, listen there's always somebody like we know cashman can work backdoor deals but the, the, the headliner is, is Luis castillo and he, he auditioned for him and he, he wiped the yankees all over the map would you put volpe would you give him up Listen, I think I think Volpe is more expendable. By the way, for people who don't know, he's their double A. He's a shortstop prospect, correct? Yeah, he's their number one prospect. Yeah. Having an okay year, but listen, you know, he's he's young still, and he's he, he's the one everyone talks about. Him and Jason Dominguez, the switch hitter, who's now yeah. in High A in Hudson Valley. Now, listen, the, my my theory on that is you keep Jason Dominguez no matter what because he's a switch hitter, and you have another great shortstop with Oswaldo Pereira. Um, um, Peraza, I believe his name is that you could that you have too that you you need it and IKF is playing good too so you have him for another year so you could figure that out but one of them's gonna go if you're gonna get rid of the if you're gonna trade so I don't know that's a that's a the tough answer call. is would you give up Volpe I would give up Volpe if it meant a World Series yes not if I'm looking into the future with Doc Brown and his time machine <laughs> I would say give up Anthony Volpe but you're, listen it's proven if you need to, if you got to win man you're gonna have to give someone up and they know yeah. that they yeah. know that. The other teams know that. They're not stupid. They're not going to just take some guy and Joey Gallo. They're going to want to dump Patrick Corbin's salary, or they're going to want to dump someone else's salary. It's just how it works, you know? Right. And they, they're not dumb. That's why they're there. They're in that position to wheel and deal. And Cashman's not afraid. Of, he, you know, he's not afraid to take risks, and that's really what I think a lot of Red Sox fans, they're not envious of the Yankees or the, they, they don't want Brian Cashman as their GM, but they know that Cashman's going to do what he feels he needs to do to win, whereas right now, Heim Bloom, uh, they're still sort of, it seems like, and again, Dan Chan, see the Globe, I think he ca- calls it the illusion of, of contention or something like that. Like, they want the fans to think that they're close, even when they're not, and do nothing to make the team closer. Like, I, I really will be surprised if the Red Sox make any deal for any degree of talent. And all these guys they're showcasing in the bigs, they're not doing that well. So you couldn't move Jeter Downs or Jaron Duran for a, a used ball bag right now. Um, you just you just couldn't because they don't look like they're bona fide major leaguers. And yeah, it's tough. It's tough if your team's not playing good, though, either. It's really yeah. hard. It's no, hard. True. The talent's there. Uh, but, you know, listen, it'll be interesting to see what happens. They both need to be doing something. The Yankees are going to have to add. And, you know, who knows what the Red Sox would do? They're the 50 50 right now. Yeah, and we'll be talking about this a lot more leading up to and through the deadline. He's John Senegal. I'm Brian Shackman. This has been episode 85 of Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports.